Hello. Yes, it's me. It's Ann. I'm back. I have an idea. I know that's a weird thought, but I have an idea. And hopefully this is going to work out. What I have done is I took my Frankenstasia palette. And my Frankenstasia palette, I gave it its numbers and I decided to do a bingo with it. But to do the bingo, since I don't actually own any Anastasia, I still have to do one of my stash mashups. So let's see how close I get. I'll be right back. Alrighty, I'm back. Sort of. Mostly. Anyway, I did my numbers with my randomizer, and I got two colors that were two that I put in. The number two, which is the matte bright pink that's now up in the top of it, and the number six, which is the matte bright yellow. The rest of them, I have number 13, which is the orange, and 11, which is shimmer teal, and one, which is shimmer white. I got a lot of shimmer. I don't think that's going to be that much of a problem, though. I'm going to cross my fingers. Anyway, I've started picking through my stash and trying to figure out which colors I'm going to have to mash up to do this. Okay. This one in here, this is all my color pop and a few other things, singles. And I don't think that the teal that I have in here is going to work. I may have to mix colors, but we'll see what I've got first. And Okay, this is my 35M, and I think I've got an orange in here that will do the trick. Now, the colors look a little muddy in the pan currently, because the black that was over here went kaboof, and there's still like kind of a, kind of a coating of black on there in spots. And then I've got Sunset Rush Care of Beauty. And if the orange that's in the 35M doesn't work, let me tell you, I got some oranges in here I can play with. And then, I've got the Morphe palette for Pride Month. And I've got that white shimmer right there, right there. And I've got the bright pink right there. And that yellow right there. That should be fun. Now, let me see if I have anywhere that teal color. I may have to go digging out a couple other yeah now this is one of my profusion palettes and i've got some similar stuff in here to what i've got in that palette there i mean i've got three different shimmer whites i've got that pink again see got the shimmer whites down here got that pink so i don't have to just stick to you know, the one palette. This is another profusion. You got that shimmer orange in here. Right there. Yeah, I've been I had fun with profusion over the last Christmas holiday. 
because they put out a bunch of really, really nice palettes for the Christmas holiday. Okay, there's my shimmer orange again down in here. But I still don't have a teal. So I picked up a bunch of the Perfusion palettes because they were inexpensive and for the most part I waited until we were past the holiday because then on top of everything else they were on sale. in this one that I think may work, but I know I've got some other teals in here. See, I wouldn't care so much about trying to dig for the colors except that that's a very specific blue-green. It is definitely not just blue. That ain't it. However, nah, that ain't got the right shade of orange. That's too green. that's going to work, and if I have to, there's one, a green right next to it that I think will mix well to give me that teal. I mean, sometimes you just got to drop back and punch, you know? And this is from the Jewel Rocks edition of Magnifies. So, I've got that and that, and I think together I may get my teal. However, I'm going to start with that really intense matte, and I'm going to do that one in the, yeah, probably the matte pink, after I put my primer on. Yeah, I've got my hair pinned up out of the way, and all that silly stuff. get my primer out. Yes, I'm using the white. It's my favorite eye primer. And you know it. Rite Aid in town. And at Rite Aid, while I was looking at stuff, I found they sort of have their own in-house brush set. Now, I don't know for sure if it's just theirs or if they private labeled something or what. But they're fairly inexpensive. This is one of them. 
they've got two domed brushes that I was looking at and go, oh look, domed brushes. Because I like using domed actual round brushes because of my little squinky eyes. And I'm going, okay, at three bucks a brush, I'll try them. They have a tight one and a wide one. So you can get into small places and whatever. Now, the brush itself, the bristles, they're synthetics. And on the handle, all it's got is contour shadow brush. Doesn't say a whole lot else about it. Both of them just say contour shadow brush. This one's a little bigger. This one's a little smaller. The bristles themselves are really nice. They're not perfect. They're not absolutely great. They're pretty nice. Um, the problem I'm having with them is that the plastic handles don't weigh anything. They just don't. They do not weigh anything. Which for some people isn't a problem. I don't like it because it doesn't feel like I've actually got a hand on it. And I prefer to feel like I've got a hand on it. Alrighty. I'm going to take some bright pink. This little fantasy has got this bright pink up here in the corner. And I'm going to start there and see how this one looks. And if I don't feel like it looks right, I'll go after one of the other bright pinks. Anyway, I know I've been a bit unreliable on my schedule lately, but school comes first. And I really appreciate you guys hanging in, even when I don't post on directly on time. Because if you're not hanging in, then I got no reason to post anyway. But this class has given me a fit. If any of you write, you start working on a story. And if the story's going good, you can put down quite a bit on the page pretty quickly. And I'm going, okay, wow, this one's working pretty well. I really like where it's going. And then when you turn in stuff, they go, you know, we only really need 10 to 15 pages. 29 is a bit over the top. And I'm going, <laughs> so then I have to stop working forward on something that, that seems to have grabbed and I'm going with. And then do all of the feedback corrections from both my professor and my peers. I have to do all of those feedback corrections on just that little piece. So the story is still churning in my head, okay? It wants writ. And then I have to go through and figure somewhere between page 10 and 15 where is a good place to cut so that I've only got a short number of pages to work. And I'm going, this is going, man, a pain in the butt. And it is. So I'm now past the first feedback round with my professor and my peers. I have submitted the 15 pages. Well, it's actually 14 and a half 
because I had to break it between scenes to keep it from getting really lumpy. Um, I've gone through the first round, making additions and subtractions and corrections and that kind of thing. So I just, this week, this past week, turned in my updated draft back to the professor so she can look at it. Um, <clears throat> plus, I had to do a discussion based on some of the, the textbooks. And I'm like, and then I have to go back into, after I put up my discussion, I have to go back in and answer at least two of my peers. Now, the story is still going to go, go, go. So I'm like written way ahead. But I have to keep going backwards and fiddling with that 14 and a half pages. Doing stuff that's heading toward, you know, final edits and kind of stuff. And I'm like, but I'm out here and this is back here. And normally I would, you know, edit it all in a flat stream. But you don't get away with that when you're doing this. <laughs> With the class structure, it's just, it don't work. You don't get any slack on it. You just don't. And it's really just annoying. Because you're, try you're trying to work towards something. And you're not really getting out of that one section, even though, literally, you're right in bed. So, it's, uh, it's annoying. It really is annoying. Let's see. No, that ain't it. That ain't it, Jack. I know I've got my orange spotted. I've just got to... Get back into it here. Whee! No, it's the pale orange, you knucklehead. It's the pale shimmer orange. Oh! Back and forth, back and forth. Forth and back. Okay, there we go. Now the other thing I've got to worry about while I'm trying to do this is I've got colors that aren't exactly those colors. And I'm trying to work in colors that will come close enough. Next thing about Profusion is that if they've got different palettes but they've got some of the same colors in them, they don't try and play it with the, with names. If it's tangerine or topaz in the big palette, it's topaz or, you know, whatever, in the small palette, if they've got the same colors. I've got, actually got a couple of different pans full of cookie that they put in some of their, their um, darker shade stuff. So, I'm going to take the Profusion Topaz. see how it goes. my shimmer orange. I put the pink on. Let's see, what else am I going to do here? Because I've still got the teal, the shimmer white, and the bright matte yellow. I'm going to do the teal next. Now I'm going to get uppity and I'm going to hose it some. Ta-da! 
just a little touch. Okay. Anybody else out there a writer? I've actually been writing for years. But now I'm trying to do a little bit more with it. Doing the schoolwork and I've had two of my professors now who do the writing feedback kind of stuff. And two of them. Two different styles of writer. Both of them are professional writers. I've gotten lucky. The first one that I encountered like that. No, I've had three now. One of my very first classes was a professional writer named Saul Smith. And I've actually got a, one of the samples off of Amazon for the book he wrote while I was, just before I got into this class. And I still got to go back and buy the rest, you know, buy the whole book. But I got, I really enjoyed that class. I got a lot out of it. Good guy. And then I had the next one. which was Professor Oakes, who's also a professional writer. You know, some of our favorite movies and TV shows get turned into kind of serial books in some sections, like sci-fi a lot. He writes for the X-Files franchise and one of my favorite shows, and for aliens and a few other things and does some separate stuff and does some stuff with his wife who is also an author and he liked what I was doing gave me some tip, tips and stuff and I think one of the biggest compliments that I've gotten from any of my instructors so far has been that they like the fact that I'm coming up with some novel ideas for my novels. You know, I'm not sticking to the usual descriptions of things and the, you know, the, the predictable. So now the professor that I'm in class with Professor Stan, also a professional writer. She's also into one of my favorite video games. We both play World of Warcraft. She asked me about what my main character and stuff was. And I'm going, well, let's see if I'm on the right side or wrong side of the... Uh, faction line here. I will tell you, if you know what World of Warcraft is, I am for the Horde. I am one of Vol'jin's troops. If you don't know what that means, it means I'm a troll hunter. And I enjoy it. And I like staying on that side of the line. Yep, that would be me. I like being on that side of the line. I am definitely... I started off... Just about everybody in the world that plays this game starts off on the Alliance side. Because they don't know better. <clears throat> don't come for me. I'm over here. <laughs> but... Yes, I played Alliance when I first started. And then I discovered the Horde. And the Horde... Yeah, they're more volatile. They're more violent in some cases. But only in some cases. It's like... 
it's like you don't really end up being that violent necessarily just because you're the Lord. But you don't let anybody take advantage of your ass either if you can avoid it. And it takes a little different mindset to be from the Horde. They are seriously stuck on the concept of warrior honor. They ain't got no time for dishonorable people. If you want to fight with them, fine. But you don't do it dishonorably. You just don't. You don't want to go down as dishonorable. It's just, yeah, no. You get some of the Alliance groups that will really stand up and kick ass over honor. But not as many as in the Horde. It doesn't seem like. Plus, I'm a hunter. But I do get just fratzed out and upset when so much of the game includes hunting just your basic critters for food and such but there's also some of the um, some of the hunting that's part of just like doing your job kind of thing to raise levels and you're taking out animals that are not threatening anybody and they're only asking for little bitty pieces of the animal that don't really like it's not for food it's just for points and I'm like I get really annoyed when it's a non-aggressive animal yes I'm weird next question <laughs> I'm weird. This is this is this is a known quantity. It's just how I work. Okay, now the only thing I haven't used yet is that matte yellow. And I've got it right here. Take that right under Get right up under that lower lash line with the yellow, that bright matte yellow. And then I'm going to take it right here. Just because I want to. Take that off of there. I'm going to go pick up some of that glitzy white. Kind of mix it with a little bit of this yellow. I'm going to get a little more spark in here on this inner corner. like we've got all the colors. I'm going to go throw some face on, do a couple other things, and I will be back and we can finish this up. Hello. Yeah, I got my foundation on. I've powdered it and I did my first spray down. <sighs> a lot of this 
is for the main part of the face. I've got the AOA Studio in porcelain. This one, AOA Studio is for the most part a dollar. For the most part. This one is, this foundation is $1.88. Because it, see that little A plus on there with the pencil? Anything you buy that's got the A plus with the pencil, that's over a dollar. The extra amount goes to support education. The stuff like this porcelain concealer, it says paw paw on it with a little kitty. This goes to animal welfare. My shopping bags that I use since Oregon has gone to no plastic bags for shopping whatsoever. I get them and there's they're $1.33. <clears throat> they come in a little pouch that has a plastic clip on it so you can just hang it on your purse or whatever, your belt belt loops or wherever else you want to hang it. Little pouch, pop open the little pouch, pull your bag out. And the $1.33 bags, they go to ecology groups. So, yeah, AOA Studio has got some interesting stuff going on. Yeah. Yeah. Now, I've been looking, I've been looking for some interesting colors of makeup, including, you know, it's like I couldn't find, last year, I couldn't find a decent black lipstick anywhere. AOA Studio. Just picked it up. Now we've got Leprechaun Day coming. So since we have Leprechaun Day coming, I picked up from one of my favorite lipsticks by way of AOA Studio because they had it. This is the clean color and the name on it is Envious Desire. That's a green. <clears throat> so now I've got my Leprechaun Day. And some of my, got some of my grungy stuff. Now, the lipstick I'm planning to use today is actually a combo. I got this green that's just called number 11 off of AliExpress. And it's definitely a matte green. From AOA Studio, I got this diamond lip gloss in a color called Mermaid. Wait till you see these together. It's just, yeah. Mm -mm. Alrighty. Let's see, I'm going to start with my bronzer, which is technically a blush from AOA Studio. It's called Fino. And yes, for some people, people with lots more melanin than I have ever had, this would make an excellent blush. For me, it is definitely a bronzer. La 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 la. And for anybody who hasn't seen these brushes before, it's based off of the toothbrush version that Artis came out with, and then everybody started copying it. And then some people were going, yeah, I love the top of the brush. I love the bristle set, but I really hate the toothbrush. So then somebody else came out with these, like BH and a couple other places. And I said, you know, I really love the bristle set, the way they the way they sit, the density and all that stuff, but I really don't like the toothbrush. So and I've got all kinds of sizes. Just all kinds of them. And like for my foundation and such. 
it didn't have a big powder brush with it but I found something that comes close enough to the rose gold that's a big fluffy brush it's almost ticky alrighty didn't really have a little floofy brush either now this is another this is another AOA studio that I got when I first started doing this stuff this is the AOA studio line and this is the Lumi blush in delicate pink I've been working on this since August of 18 the only thing that's looking worn down is the print on the exterior and it's a gorgeous, gorgeous blush. Just a little. And it doesn't take a lot to get some decent color. Now, on the under eye waterline, I have AOA Studio Cream in, yeah, this one's the Blueberry. I've also got a Pistachio. The upper line is Elf in TLTs. I've also got some of the uh, blueberry up in the eyebrows just because it seems like it's kind of becoming a thing so I decided to join the thing all right give me another little spritz here I got these earrings from AOA Studio too. I've got basic, just a flare tunnel in the lower holes. And I get the little bullet shaped rubber stoppers for the back of the earrings. And I flip it so that the narrow part is going inside the taper, you know, inside the flare instead of having the wide part. So, literally, I just flip it around so that the bullet is going forward instead of backwards. And it holds my posts pretty well. I've also got some others where I've got some silicone flares that if I take this regular flare tunnel out, I can just go slippity doo dah. Let me get some mascara on. This is clean color. And it's from their Brush Talks line. You know, all those funky different sizes and shapes of brushes that people are either loving or hating. They've got a bunch of the shapes. Didn't get that blended out quite so well. Anyway, they've got a bunch of them that have similar shapes to some of the really popular mascaras. Now this one is really really short compared to the Bad Gal Bang but 
it's got those rubber porcupine bristles and I rather like it there goes my grandbaby noisy kid cute but noisy La, 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 la. I tried moving my other mirror back just a little bit and I can see where that was not necessarily my brightest idea. I've got some uneven spots here and there. And it's not perfect. Which, you know, I will manage to survive. It's just not perfect. Let's see if I can fix a couple of tiger stripes here. That'll help with that bit. Not as obvious. Got a couple of glumpy plot places on my eyebrows yeah well if I was doing it perfect I'd be making buckets of ducats instead of sitting here doing this alrighty now let's get to this part basic no foot Thing that really bugs me about this doe foot is it tickles. I'm not very ticklish and it has to be in just the right places but that's ticklish. Basically just doing kind of an outline with this one. So I've got the corners in the center. Kind of like doing a pencil liner. There you go. Bold color. Well, I have to get started on the bold color according to the cotton picking groundhog. We got an early spring coming, so need some bold color. With any luck, depending on how my class is going, I should have one up for Valentine's Day. No, I still don't know what I'm doing for Valentine's Day. Let me know what you think. If you did one of the Frankenstasia change-ups, I challenge you to do this. Throw a five-number bingo on that mashup. And then comb your stash to find the pieces. Got one more thing. I almost forgot. How dare me. How dare me. 
AOA Studio Highlighter. No, I am not sponsored. This one is called Empress. We can start singing the Bling Bling song if you want. Now, I have no idea what I'm talking about, about Bling Bling. There's probably somebody out there that's got something that has to do with Bling. Little bling, little glow, and this big ass pan is only a dollar. Alright, now we got the glow. Now what do you think? Just remember, I don't keep mail money around. I don't have that kind of budget. Good.